Hello, my name is Brooklyn Snagaki. I am a full-time faculty member at MidMichigan College, and I teach at the foundations level. I'm here to talk a little bit about how it looks to start eliminating clinical paperwork. Now, about a month ago, Dr. Beth Corner, who is also a full-time faculty member here at MID, amazing woman, inspirational woman, actually got rid entirely of her clinical paperwork for our fourth and final semester students. That means that when they are in clinical, they are graded only on their clinical performance. How well did they care for the patient? How professional were they? Did they have interprofessional and intraprofessional collaboration? How effective was their patient education? So it's really, really exciting stuff. But in order for the students to be ready to do that in fourth semester, we have to start all the way back at the foundation level. Now, I have heard from other um, instructors and sometimes students that foundations level students don't have the knowledge to put pieces together like fourth semester students or third or second, that everything is too new. We can't overload them with too much. So we really have to kind of um, mama bird feed them um, to get them where they need to be. And in my experience, that is absolutely not true. If you put the bar here, they will come back here. So before I get into, you know, step one, step two, step three, um, a piece of advice I have for other foundations uh, instructors looking to do this sort of thing is be bold. Get rid of your entire clinical paperwork. I had 17 pages when I took over foundations um, about three and a half years ago, 17 pages of a nursing process worksheet. And when I took over, I thought, oh my gosh, ugh. I don't want to grade 17 pages per student per week, and they don't want to do 17 pages of work every single week um, based on their clinical experience. Now, not only do we not want to do that, but the student's performance was not telling me that this was effective. The paperwork was a little bit busy, um, and the students were giving me that same feedback. And let's be honest, 48 hours after clinical, if they forgot a piece of information, they forgot to get the potassium, do you think that they are going to leave that blank? Probably not. They're going to make up a potassium to put in there so that they can finish this very important nursing process worksheet. So not only were they not getting a lot out of it, sometimes it was a little bit non-factual. Um, so Part of the impetus for this change, for me at least, was to make the clinical paperwork more relevant to their experience, um, to make it in more uh, real time, um, and more reflective of an actual nurse's experience during the clinical day. So what I did first was I took that 17 pages, tossed it, got rid of it. It's a daunting um, prospect to start from scratch, but it is absolutely worth it in my experience. I can, I can tell you that without reservation. And I ask myself a really important question. I tell my students all the time, you can't um, plot the best route to get to where you need to go if you don't know where you're going. And where I wanted to go was mm, basing their clinical grading and um, their clinical evaluations on how they actually care for patients, not on how well they filled out a care plan um, and not how well they could formulate nursing diagnoses. So for instance, I wanted to see my foundation students, and, and they do do this, they are at this level by the time they leave me, hey, I see that my patient has a BNP of 7,200, let's say. And I also notice that their ejection fraction is 25%. And I notice that they have crackles in their lungs. And I notice that they have gained three pounds overnight. Hmm. So now I need to take that information, synthesize it and say, oh gosh, I have a problem. Okay. Now, instead of writing out what I'm going to do about that problem, they actually do these steps. So they're not saying, 
Hmm. My patient has a problem of ineffective tissue perfusion um, related to congestive heart failure as evidenced by a BNP of X and an ejection fraction of X and crackles in the lungs. They are taking that in their own minds, deciding what the problem is and going to the nurse and say, and saying, listen, I have this problem about my patient for X, Y, and Z, and I think that we should institute daily weights, and I think we should talk to um, the physician about maybe an extra dose of furosemide, and are they on a low-sodium diet, and X, Y, and Z, and so on and so on. Um, so those are the things that we are actually going to be grading our, our, our students on. Can they synthesize this information? Do they implement these interventions? Do they talk to the nurse? Do they talk to the physician? Are they pulling in data points about, oh gosh, this med, I don't see it on here and I should see it on here. And what do I do about that? So these are the things that they're getting graded on. Now, if that's true, then what's in this four pages, I guess would be the next rational question. Um, and it's more of a clinical guide for the foundation students, because although they are capable of functioning at a very high level, they still are new baby nurses. All of this is new to them. So the clinical paperwork is more of, hey, here's how we start to plan our day. Here's where we get the information. What was that information? And questions like, um, what information immediately jumps out for you? What do you think is important? What do you think are distractors? Um, how did you come to those conclusions and how did your plan of care or your picture of your patient change throughout the day based on things that happened? And honestly, a lot of it is going to be actual um, clinical interaction or interaction at the clinical site between the instructor and the students. It's going to be, you know, Socratic questioning and rounding on your students constantly to have these conversations and help them put these pieces together um, without writing them down. They, you know, they don't have to write them down and you don't as a functioning nurse, right? You don't sit down after you see your four or five, six patients for the day. You don't write out the care plans for them. This all happens um, naturally eventually. And that's kind of, we're going to start them off running at this point. If you just need ideas or um, a, a jumping point, the four pages that I came up with are available. You can email me, um, or I know that they also are available on the webinar I did with Keith RN on May 11th. Um, but some of the key takeaways here are that number one, it can be done. We we don't have to have these students spend hours and hours and hours and lose sleep doing clinical paperwork that all in all is not reflective of what nurses actually do, right? We can change the way things have always been done. Change is not bad. We just have to be intentional about what we're changing and why we're changing it. Where are we going? What's our goal? If our goal is to have confident functioning nurses, we need to start changing things to help them get there from day one, not wait until second or third or fourth semester when they're quote unquote more comfortable um, with the nursing lingo and you know the nursing world. Um, I hope that um, the article and the video and the paperwork that is shared um, is helpful to faculty at large when thinking about making these big changes. Um, we are an awesome success story. Um, and that is completely because of our amazing students and because of the awesome work all of our faculty members have done um, to get to this point. We work together closely from foundations to Adult Health 1, Adult Health 2, Adult Health 3 to make sure that the students have the progression, that um, we know what each other are, are doing in clinical and what we're working on. Um, and that's another big part of it is collaboration and making sure that you're not a silo um, to help your students transition from one semester to the next. Um, thank you for watching and I'm sure I will be seeing everybody again soon.